good y'all welcome back today we're going to be reacting to slap shoes once again eight things you probably didn't know about nascar and we all know i'm trying to learn new shit about nascar y'all said he informative so we're just going we're going to get into it we're going to watch the original video link will be down in the description let's get into the video let's see what we can learn from mr slap shoes over time, I've noticed that a good chunk of my subscribers have either never watched a NASCAR race or have just started getting That's into the sport. Me. And with the quarantine finally being partially lifted this week, and NASCAR being the first American sport to resume competition, albeit with no fans in attendance, there's going to be an influx of new viewers checking into NASCAR for the first time. So I thought it might be a good idea to explain what exactly the hell is going on here for newcomers. This is like NASCAR the perfect is actually video a lot for like me. baseball or golf. The more you know about it, the more interesting it becomes. But the less you know about it, the more ridiculous it seems. So with information Very at a true. premium, here are eight things that you probably didn't know about NASCAR. First off, NASCAR was started by state and federal criminals. Although NASCAR's what? founder Bill France was never a rum runner himself, NASCAR's early rosters from the late 40s and early 50s were filled with convicts and guys who just never got caught. Before what? and after Prohibition, intoxicating spirits were banned outright in several states in the southeast. So enterprising young men throughout the south souped up their hot rods so they could outrun the cops when they were on one of their nightly runs. Eventually, local shit. legends grew, and people wanted started to know by some, which some of their local and bootleggers was the best driver. And so, tracks and competitions were organized, and at some point, somebody had the bright idea to start selling tickets to these get-togethers, and stock car racing was born. Bill France, a Daytona Beach resident and businessman, as well as a former race car driver himself, saw the growing interest in the and established the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing, NASCAR and the rest was history. While many NASCAR stars had their fair share of run-ins with the law, there was none more famous than the last American hero himself, Junior Johnson. A 50-time winner in NASCAR's top series, Junior Johnson was arrested by federal revenuers in 1956 when he went to fire up his father's still one night. He spent one year in federal prison and was eventually pardoned by President Ronald Reagan many years later, although he had begun the appeal process under the Carter administration. But in true bootlegger fashion, if you ever brought this up to Junior while he was still alive, he'd be quick to remind you that he never got caught behind the wheel while he was making one of his runs. Junior oh, gained a wow. reputation on the track for being a tough-as-nails driver and an innovative mechanic. So innovative, in fact, that he is widely regarded as one of the most cheatingest figures in all of NASCAR. And that gets me to number two on this list. How you cheating cheating NASCAR? is not only tolerated by NASCAR fans, but is actually celebrated. I know this comes as a shocker <gasps> and is at odds with every other sport in existence, but hear me out. Although the sanctioning body of NASCAR is very stringent with its rules, shit. NASCAR fans have always turned a blind eye to cheaters in the sport and actually sing their praises amongst themselves. Teams are allowed to either build their own cars or purchase them from other teams. And even though NASCAR has strict specifications that those cars have to adhere to, there's always a little wiggle room left to exploit. There's an old saying in NASCAR, if you ain't cheating, then you ain't winning. Everybody does it Yo, whether they're ass. usually bending the rules or just breaking a rule before it's on the books. Junior Johnson was so prolific in the art of rule dodging that he actually had one of his creations put into the NASCAR Hall of Fame, the Yellow Banana, a 66 Ford Galaxy that was one of the most disgustingly illegal cars in the history of the sport and what got made its it name due to its shape and its yellow paint job. But if there was ever a mechanic who could best Junior Johnson in the dark arts of stock car cheating, it was Smokey Eunuch. With a silly name but a penchant for disregarding the rules at every turn, NASCAR fans became enamored with Smokey's antics. He did anything to get a leg Call up. Call me name fly though. Making I, I can't even big, cap. Mounting the bodies too far forward on the frame, increasing the size of the fuel tank, and when officials became wary of that, they mandated the size of the fuel tank to 20 gallons. But Smokey then just made the fuel line wrap around the car, which squeezed an extra gallon or two out of the limit set in place. And in one famous example, Smokey had his fuel tank seized by NASCAR tech inspectors, saying that it was too what? large and he had a total of 10 infractions that needed to be changed. Smokey was like they a pulled NASCAR the fuel tank scientist. Out of the car as extra punishment, thinking that Smokey would have to push the car back to the garage. But instead, Smokey just jumped in the car, cranked it up, still with no fuel tank in it, and drove it back to his crew while shouting at the officials, make that 11 things. True to his name, Smokey fogged up the lines between right and wrong. And even to this day, this proud tradition of rule bending is still alive in NASCAR. As recently as 2018, during the Flexgate scandal, Stuart Haas racing cars have manipulated the bracing on the rear window to give way at high speeds to direct more airflow towards the spoiler, an exploit famously found out by NASCAR Reddit. Being as there was no rule in place to break at the time, be finding NASCAR out every the day. Stuart Haas stand, but said that anything of the like found going forward would be dealt with harshly, as teams found out the hard way later. The Stuart Haas team of cars beat the law at the time, but that actually leads to the question, wait, there are teams in NASCAR? Well, yeah, number three, NASCAR is a team sport. 
Dude, one team owner might expand his table my from one card to include two, three, or even four cards. Every single the maximum one I've ever had. as of right now. Piloted by different drivers with different crew chiefs who prepare but you guys the cars. Have already answered them These teams well, share information so. and discoveries, but still prepare their cars independently according to the preferences of the drivers. Sometimes this leads to friendly and not so friendly competition in house, which may or may not have beneficial effects on the teams. It's all dependent on the chemistry of the people involved. So the owner of the entire operation has to manage his personnel accordingly. Just as important as the team of mechanics are the pit crew members, who service the car during the actual race. These fearless men plucked from the rosters of professional and collegiate athletic programs, braved the chaos of pit road and changed tires and put new fuel in the car, all while making adjustments and repairs as dozens of other cars and teams are all doing the same thing on pit Bro, lane. Bro, you see how fast they work? ideal conditions, a NASCAR pit crew can change four tires, top off fuel, and make adjustments to the car in less than 14 seconds. And yes, sometimes accidents do occur <gasps> and they get hurt. But thanks oh, to the and the skill of other drivers out there shit. on pit lane, so homie got his leg ran few over. and far between. The pit crew members are the athletes that make the team the best they can be on race day. But what about the guys behind the wheel piloting the race car itself? That gets us to number four, yes, the drivers are athletes. It takes a special type of crazy to hop into a metal coffin wearing a fireproof suit and yeah. swing a car around at 200 miles an hour. But it Most also deaf. takes an insane amount of physical fitness as well. Temperatures inside the car can reach as high as 140 degrees Fahrenheit. You and got in me this fucked oven, up. you have to think critically about your next move and have cat-like reflexes, all while communicating to your crew about how your car is holding up via radio. NASCAR legend Bobby Allison used to prepare for these That's insane so conditions much. by driving around his home in Hueytown, Alabama in his personal car in the middle of the summer with the windows rolled up, with the heat blasting, and while wearing several jackets. Drivers nowadays take trips to the sauna, have a strict fitness regimen, and diet they have to adhere to in order to stay at peak performance. The man we can thank for this breakthrough is Mark Martin, a man often derided as undersized during his early career. The 5'6 Arkansas look native undersized. took up weightlifting and high-level fitness programs to make up for it, and found out that the workouts actually made him better equipped to handle the demands of NASCAR racing. And soon after that, nearly everyone followed suit. Even in his 50s and still winning races, Mark was still rocking an 8-pack. Wait, Mark Martin was still ripped. winning races in his 50s? Yep, that gets us to number 5 on the list. NASCAR drivers can have incredibly long careers. The average successful NASCAR driver will make his first starts in his early 20s, and will retire in his mid to late 40s. Some drivers even go beyond this. In 1992, Harry Gantt set the record that still stands today as the oldest driver to ever win a NASCAR race at 52 years old. Oh, Martin wow. Martin got close in 2009 at age 50, but no driver has challenged the throne since. And to give you some perspective, if the youngest driver to ever win a race, Joey Logano, who got his first win at the age of 19 in 2009, beat Harry Gantt's record, we would have to wait until 2043. Current drivers span all age groups and backgrounds. Joey Logano from Connecticut will turn 30 this year. His teammate Ryan Blaney is 26 and hails from Ohio. And one of the best in the business right now, Kevin Harvick from Bakersfield, California, is 44. Harvick just from a Bakersfield? Extension. Hey, maybe what? he'll be the one to take handsome Harry Gantz. That is not, okay, that so is not far at all the why of NASCAR. Me. But as you sit down to watch the race, what should you be keeping your eye on? Yes, Fucking there's daring, Baker's defying food. moves I and never beating thought. and banging action happening every so often. But what keeps NASCAR crazies such as myself glued to the TV for the entire duration of the race? Number Jesus six, Christ. it's all about strategy. Most NASCAR races are between four and 500 miles long. And as you probably guessed, you have to stop for tires and fuel along the way. But when do you do it? Your tires will wear out faster the harder you push them. So do you just take it easy and make up time in the long run? Or do you push it now and end up losing time as the race goes on? You need to make it to the front in order to win, but when and how you do this matters in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Helping the driver and the crew work this out and masterminding the whole plan is the crew chief. He oversees the whole operation and decides what adjustments to make to the car according to the driver's inputs over the radio. He also makes suggestions to the driver on how hard to push the envelope. Some drivers like their crew chief to handle the mental heavy lifting. Others prefer to run at their own pace and just let the crew chief worry about adjustments. Either way, pairing the right drivers with the right crew chief is crucial to ending up in victory lane at the end of the day. But there's one other guy in this conversation that we haven't talked about yet. The spotter. That gets us to number seven. Drivers can't actually see that much inside of their cars. Due to safety regulations, drivers are pretty much bolted into their seats and their head movement is very limited. So to help with this, drivers have spotters that communicate with them low constantly, key driving telling line. them where the other cars are out on the track, if there's a wreck up ahead, or what the leader is up to. These crew members, perched high this atop the press box, are I'm usually sorry, family members of the driver or former drivers themselves, who 
were handpicked based on their ability to communicate effectively with the driver. On those crazy double file restarts, the information spotters provide is understandably extremely important. In the early days before radio communications were widely available, Ooh. lots of fatalities and injuries were caused simply because drivers didn't Jeez, know what was happening up ahead. That's bad. And as you probably that's expected, any time a car is on the track, it is required by rule that the driver has a spotter up on the spotter stand to give him an extra set of eyes in the sky. Veteran drivers usually only have essential communications with their spotter and crew chief, as they can almost read each other's minds. However, newer drivers typically have a lot more radio traffic, as the spotter kind of doubles as a cheerleader and guide. And here's the coolest part about all this radio chatter. You can actually listen in. Using various apps on NASCAR.com or by renting That's a scanner sick. at the track itself, you can pick a driver and listen in on all the back and forth action for yourself. That's and dope. yes, sometimes the teams listen in on each other to see what kind of strategies they're cooking up. So don't be surprised if they start talking in code. But fair warning, I mean, should they did say cheating is a big thing, so... Sometimes they say things that aren't exactly PG rated. So think twice about having your kids join in. Some tracks, though, are so massive that they require multiple spotters in different locations to help out the driver. And that gets us finally to number eight. NASCAR goes to a lot of very different racetracks, and yes, we even make a few right-hand turns. Every driver in the series has to have a mastery of different disciplines in racing. Whether we're talking about the two mile and up super speedways, the half mile short tracks, or Damn. the twisting and turning road courses, by the end of the 36 race schedule, every Shit driver will have been put through a gauntlet of demanding venues. Tracks come in all shapes and sizes, and some of the lower divisions, NASCAR's minor leagues, even race on dirt. These circuits dot the U.S. landscape from major markets like Atlanta and Las Vegas to small towns tucked away in the southeast like Bristol and Martinsville and everywhere in between. There are no away games, so to speak, in NASCAR, but with the vast majority of teams being located in North Carolina, having to pinball across the U.S. is a demanding effort in its own right, as hauler drivers will work around the clock driving a garage on wheels to and from each racetrack during the year. That's the crews and drivers crazy. will fly out to the track a few days before the race and spend hours running practice laps until they're finally happy with the car and move on to qualifying time trials to set the field, where the fastest driver starts at the front, also known as the pole position. Well, that about wraps it all up. Eight things you might not have known about NASCAR. Hopefully this video has shed some light on this weird traditionally southern motorsport and given you a greater appreciation of these cars going around in differently shaped Most circles definitely at unreasonably has. fast speeds. If you want to know more about the types of drivers that make NASCAR what it is, then you can check out my video on the nine types of NASCAR winners here and in the description down below. Okay. Also, my big shout out to Bayer to that as well, so who edited this video soon. for me while I've been busy at work. You can check all right, you guys. I see why y'all told me to react to Slap Shoes. He literally, this was like the perfect time to video because he answered every single question I had, I think, in last video and some ones I've had in like previous videos. So he, he killed it. I, I love it. I learned a lot and it, it just helped me understand more of the things that I already heard about. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the reaction. If you guys want to see me react to the nine types of NASCAR winners, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. I love y'all. Peace. They wanna fall. What? Back when I was down bad, was stuck in the mud. That nigga didn't clean up Louis V on the so so.